Hello dear friends this is your personal English coach professor DC and in this video I will be explaining act 1 scene 2 of the world famous play The Tempest written by William Shakespeare. So in act 1 we saw that there was a sea, there was a ship on it and there was a tempest which destroyed the ship. Now we will understand scene 2. Where is this scene unfolding? Scene 2 is happening or the events on the scene 2 are unfolding on an island and before Prospero's cell. Again, who is Prospero? Prospero is a Duke of Milan. But in this scenario, we can say he was the Duke of Milan who is living in exile from the past 12 years. And what is the meaning of a cell? Cell is a small room. Now, Prospero, the Duke of Milan, has his own cell, has his own room, and it's on an island where he is living on an exile. So, in scene two, Prospero and Miranda are seen first. Now, who is Miranda? Miranda is Prospero's daughter and she is one of the main characters of this play. So let's see what Miranda says. Now Miranda was observing whatever happened in scene one. She on the island shore was watching how there was this disastrous and tragic storm that swallowed the whole ship that broke the ship apart she observed each and everything everything that happened with that poor ship so Miranda is speaking to her father and she says father if you have caused this storm with your magical powers please stop it right now so here we get to know that Prospero knows magic. She looked up at the sky and she tells her father that the sky I am looking at is so dark. It looks as if hot tar would come down raining. If this sea was unable to put out the fires in the sky, the rain of tar would come down in no time. In short, she is telling her father that the sky and the sea are looking dangerous and terrible. And because she observed everything that happened on that ship, she says, Dear father, I watched everything, everything that happened on that ship and I suffered with each and every person that suffered on the ship. It was such a beautiful ship that went down into the sea and that was shattered by this storm. I heard their cries and it really broke my heart. She says, if I was God, then I would swallow the water of the sea inside the earth before the sea could swallow the ship along with its people. So here, Miranda tells her father that I observed whatever happened and I feel really bad. So if you are the reason for their suffering and if you have caused this tempest, please stop it right away. Prospero replies, calm down, relax yourself. Everybody is safe. No harm was done. I understand whatever you saw was terrible, but trust me, nobody is harmed. Miranda says, Oh my goodness, what have I seen? What a terrible and horrific sight. What a terrible day. Prospero reassures. Just calm down, Miranda. Nobody is hurt, I'm telling you. Whatever you saw and whatever happened, everything was for a reason. Everything happened because of you. Everything happened because I had you in my mind. I have done it with my magical powers, but the reason is you. Now I can tell you the reason, but you do not know who you are, since you don't even know who I am. Of course you know that I am your father, but do you know where I come from or who I am in reality? You know me by the name of Prospero, your father. And you also know that your father, your poor father lives in a little room. 
Miranda replies. She says, I never found a necessity to know more about you. And so I never meddled with my thoughts. And so Prospero decides that Miranda should know the background, should know the full story. Prospero tells her that it's about time you knew everything. She asks her father to let the secret be out and Prospero then asks Miranda to help him remove his magical garment. So Prospero was always wearing his magical cloth or magical cloak as we say. And then he asks for his daughter's hands. Prospero tells Miranda, lie here my dear daughter. Just wipe your tears, be comfortable and I should admit that whatever you saw, yes I did it with my magical powers. The horrible sight that you saw of a shipwreck because of which you are crying. I had planned everything but trust me I had planned it in such a way that nobody was hurt. Not so much as a hair on anyone's head was hurt. It means everybody is safe. Then Prospero asks Miranda to sit down and then he tells her that it's time for her to know everything and to know more. Miranda tells her father that his intention of telling everything, of telling the background happened in the past as well. He always started off telling her about the history and the background of where they came from and then he left midway. He suddenly stopped, says Miranda. And then Miranda tells Prospero that she was left with so many questions because he left in the midway. And whenever Miranda approached Prospero, he would say, not yet, the time is not right, not now. Prospero replies, he says, all right, I must have done that in the past, but right now I'm going to tell you everything. The time has come. This is a moment where you should listen to me very carefully. Pay close attention. And then he asks important question to Miranda. The question is, do you remember the time before we came on this island, before we started living in this little room? Do you remember what happened before we came here? Miranda says, yes, I do remember. Prospero says, what do you remember? Do you remember any other house or people of anything that you can imagine? Can you tell me what do you remember? Miranda says, I have a very fuzzy or blurry memory. It's like recollecting a dream. All I remember is when I was young, I had four to five women that tended me or that took care of me. There were five women who took care of me. Prospero says, he's actually surprised how Miranda remembers all this. And he replies Miranda, he says, you had more women Miranda, but how is this possible? How do you remember that you had five women taking care of you when you were young? If you remember that, then you would also recall how we came to this island. Do you recall that? Because we had a very dark past before we came here. So if you remember this, you should remember that as well. Miranda, no, I do not remember. Prospero tells Miranda that 12 years back, he was the Duke of Milan and a person who had a lot of power. Now Prospero, he says thy father. Thy father, it means your father. So Miranda is hearing this and she has questions in her mind when he says thy father. Miranda says, are you not my father? Because you said your father. Prospero replies. He says your mother was an extremely talented girl and she told me that you are my daughter and you were his hire, a princess. So he assures her that he was his father. Miranda replies. She is shocked. She thinks and tells, good heavens, good lord, what happened after that? How were we pushed to this island? Was it a blessing or a curse that we are here? 
Prospero replies, it is a blessing, it is also a curse. We were pushed out by some evil powers or evil deeds you can say. But when we were pushed out, we were also helped by somebody to reach this island. Miranda is feeling more and more sad as she is hearing all this. She tells her father how painful it would have been for him and how painful it is right now to recall all that happened in the past and narrate it to her. She requests Prospero to tell her more and more. And in between, Prospero keep on asking Miranda if she was attentive. Dost thou attend me? Are you attending me? Are you listening to me? Miranda replied, yes, most attentively. I am all ears to you. Please tell me what happened. Prospero begins to tell the background. He starts by talking about his own brother, Prospero's brother, whose name is Antonio. He says, my brother, it means your uncle, Antonio. And then he thinks that he still cannot believe a brother could be this bad. And again continues, my own brother, whom I loved dearly, more than anyone in this world. I gave him powers to run my own state. I trusted him. And during my time, Milan was the strongest land. I was the number one prince during that time. I was well known for my dignity and my education. I am talking about education because I know or I have the knowledge of a lot of things. Things like logic, geometry, grammar, astronomy. Okay, I was referring to the lines and so Prospero starts with the story. He tells Miranda that my brother and your uncle who goes by the name of Antonio, then he thinks in his own mind, how can a brother be so bad? And continues again, my brother and your uncle, whom I love the most apart from you. I had given him powers to run the administration, to run the land Milan because I trusted him dearly. During that time, Milan was the strongest and I was the number one prince. I was known for my dignity and for my education. I wanted to study more and more and more because my interest was in studies and so I had given him powers to run the administration of Milan so that I could read and study. And gradually, I was unaware about whatever was happening in Milan. Your dishonest uncle. And then he stops and then questions Miranda if she was still listening. Miranda says, yes, yes, most attentively. I'm still here. Tell me. Prospero continues. He says that Antonio started learning things. He would grant some things and he would deny some things and he would never ask me. He would approve something and reject something. He took over all my friends. He befriended all those who were my best friend once. He had the control of all the people, the whole administration gradually. He made the people do things which he liked. Then he compares Antonio with an ivy. What is an ivy? Ivy is a plant. Prospero tells Miranda that Antonio was like an ivy which sticks inside the trunk of the tree and that ivy would feed from the tree itself. So likewise Antonio sucked out Prospero's energy. Then he again questions Miranda. You are not listening, are you? Miranda says, Oh good sir, I do, I am listening. Prospero continues. He tells Miranda to listen to him very carefully. And then he continues. He said that he started neglecting the administrative part of his land. 
he told Miranda how he was completely lost in solitude and being alone and just studying. In his word, he told Miranda that I unwillingly stirred up evil wishes in his brother's mind, in his dishonest, disloyal brother's mind. My trust for him had no limits and my confidence in him also had no limits. Now Antonio had wealth and power both. Gradually Antonio himself started to believe that he himself was the Duke of Milan and he started acquiring things whichever was possible in his authority. He was acting as if he was royal and his ambition was growing without limits he was getting greedy then prospero questions miranda are you really listening to me miranda replies whatever you are saying would cure deafness it is that shocking and of course i'm listening to you prospero continues in his words to make him look perfect a person who can perfectly run milan he started acting as if he was a duke himself and for me my library was just like dukedom when i was in my library i felt great just like a duke and gradually antonio thought that i was incapable of managing the system i was weak that's what he started thinking he became hungry for power, so hungry that he made friends with the king of Naples and they also made a deal. He told the king that he would pay him a fixed amount every year and delegate some of the controls of Milan to him. And then Prospero thinks in his mind, never before had this happened under my rule. Prospero is deeply shocked to hear all this. Prospero continues. He asks Miranda, just think about this condition. Just think about what he thought at that time. Just think about the events that might have unfolded in those times. And then tell me if you can call this man Antonio, my brother and your uncle. Miranda replies. She says, I should not think bad about my grandmother, but sometimes good women also give birth to bad sons. Prospero continues. And here is the important part. This is about an agreement. Prospero reveals the agreement that was made to Miranda. Now the condition, now the agreement. Prospero tells Miranda that the king because he was paid heavily by Antonio would help Antonio get rid of him that is Prospero in other words the king of Naples and his army the king of Naples and his army would get along with Antonio and somehow eliminate Prospero from the dukedom so one fine night was decided it was a fateful night. Antonio, with all his evil thoughts, opened the gates of Milan. Prospero himself was in the dead of darkness, which means he was sleeping. He was fast asleep. The ministers for the purpose, which means people assigned to throw Prospero out, they hurried in his room. And when all this happened, Miranda, you were crying, says Prospero. Miranda replies, how bad is that? I want to cry right now, just thinking about what had happened. The story that you're telling me really breaks my heart at the moment. Prospero continues and tells her to listen a little more, a little further. He tells Miranda that the only reason I'm telling you the story is the secret why I rose this treacherous storm. You wanted me to end my magic and stop the storm. I'm gonna tell you the background, the history and so 
I'll tell you everything right from 12 years back to this current date. So listen carefully. Miranda asks an important question. Why they didn't destroy us? Why they didn't kill us at that night? Well demanded wench, good question girl. My story would definitely raise this question. I knew it. The answer to that is people loved me dearly. People loved me like anything. So they would not dare to kill me or you. They had to make up some plan they had to cook up a story so that they can tell the people of Milan that this 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 happened and so Prospero is no longer with us so to shorten the story Prospero continues they hurried us to a ship and pushed the ship into the sea in the middle of the darkness then Prospero tells Miranda about the ship. The ship was not up to the mark. It was broken. There were rats in it. There were no sails. There were no masts. It had been an abandoned ship. And while they pushed us onto the ship, it tossed and turned and it pushed us here and there inside the ship. And we had a very pitiable condition. Miranda thinks and tells what a burden I would have been to you when I was young and your times were hard. Prospero with a smile tells Miranda that no, 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 you were not a burden. In fact, when I looked at you, when I looked at your smile, I got more and more strength. In the face of the dangers that were there, you were my only strength. Miranda asks another question. How did we reach this shore? How did we reach this island? Prospero replies, with God's help, with heaven's help. There was some food, there was some fresh water that a noble counselor of mine, a very loyal counselor of mine, Gonzalo, had already put before this action was supposed to take place. He had put everything that he knew I would need like cloths, like garments, like books, everything. He knew that I loved books more than my kingdom. So Gonzalo, because he was appointed by Antonio to carry out this evil plan, he had put everything that I needed into the abandoned ship already and that is how we survived. Miranda thinks about Gonzalo and wishes to see him. I wish I could meet that man one day. Prospero continues. He says, now I stand. And again, puts his magical cloth on it, on him. In short, he wears his magical cloak and then requests Miranda to listen to whatever they've been through. He said, we reached this island and I gave you education. I taught you just like teachers teach students in the school. You were very attentive, unlike other princesses who just waste time in fun. But you were attentive and you became well educated under my teaching, under my supervision. Miranda says, I pray to God and I ask God to thank you for it. But eventually Miranda asks the same question which she asked in the beginning. Why did you raise this storm? Prospero tells in his word, he says, luck is on my side. And the ship that you saw, the people inside the ship were our enemies. And my destiny, our destiny hangs on my plan. So if I make mistakes, my plan could go wrong. Now, please don't ask any more questions, Prospero tells Miranda. And Miranda falls asleep. Now, did Miranda really fall asleep? No, Prospero with his magical powers made Miranda sleepy so that he could carry out his secret plans. And while she was about to sleep, Prospero tells Miranda that thou art inclined to sleep, 
a good dullness and give it away i know thou canst not choose you look very sleepy and i know this feeling is nice and sweet and you have no choice so just go to sleep then miranda sleeps and prospero calls his servant come servant come i am completely ready come here my ariel come now ariel is an angel on the island and we get to know that ariel is prospero's servant angel servant ariel speaks greetings master all hail great master greetings i have come to you to serve you tell me what can i do for you today if you want me to fly i will fly if you want me to swim jump into the fire ride the clouds in the sky ariel is the right person and ariel will do it with all his might prospero says ariel did you carry out the plan just as we decided just as i told you to did you arise the storm according to my orders ariel replies exactly as you had told me i went into the king's ship i traveled right from the deck to the cabins and i scared every person in it i went to the top sail and ignited fires at different spots and then i myself came out into a single flame faster than lightning the fire was so scary and deafening that even the god of sea himself would be trembling under water prospero says my brave spirit good spirit prospero says i cannot imagine a person who is so strong and who cannot be moved by what you have done that person will also be scared ariel continues as soon as i ignited flames and the noise and lightning and rains everybody went mad and they tried their best to save themselves most of them they jumped into the sea except the sailors the king's son who go by the name of ferdinand he was frightened the most and he jumped first and he was shouting hell is empty and all the devils are here prospero good job ariel but was this near the shore or was it in the middle of the sea i hope you have not made a mistake of rising the storm in the middle of the sea you had to do it near the shore so that people can get to the shore easily ariel replies very close very close to the shore my master prospero says is everyone safe ariel are all the people safe yes not a hair perish that means not even a hair of a person was damaged people are that safe even their clothes are okay and they are unstained and they might be looking more fresher than before the storm ariel told prospero that he had executed the plan in such a way that everybody is scattered just as prospero had ordered him to do ariel told prospero that the king's son was sent far far away in one corner of the island and at this moment he is sighing and his arms are in a sad knot which means his arms are crossed and is sitting in the island's corner prospero tells and inquires about the king's ship the sailors and other ships ariel replies and assures that the king's ship is safe in the harbor and it is exactly at the same place where prospero had once told ariel to bring dew from the bermuda islands he tells prospero that the ship king's ship is hidden in a deep cove or we can say deep nook so what is a nook you must have heard nook and corners nook is actually a corner where something can be safe here you continues he tells prospero that the sailors are under the spell of my magic and they are sleeping under the deck 
and if I tell you about the remaining shapes they are scattered here and there in the Mediterranean but they are sailing all the way to Naples and they think they have witnessed a horrible shipwreck and they think they have witnessed the death of the great king Prospero praises Ariel and tells him that you have done exactly as I told you to but there is more work what is the time right now Ariel responds past the mid season which means past afternoon past noon Prospero tells it is at least two hours past noon there is no more time to waste our time is precious from this moment till six we should not waste time Ariel so do I have to toil more do I have to work more now Ariel is complaining Ariel says you are giving me more and more assignments let me remind you what you had promised me one fine day you had promised me something but you have not given it to me Prospero replies are you crazy is your mood okay what are you asking for Ariel replies my freedom I don't want to be your servant anymore give me liberty Prospero your term has not been completed don't say a word Ariel replies please recall everything that I have done for you I have done so much for you never made any mistake never confused you with my work and when I did this you told that you will take off a year from my punishment Prospero replies he tells Ariel have you forgotten your bad days have you forgotten the torture I freed you from Ariel says no I haven't forgotten Prospero says you have definitely forgotten because whenever I'm giving you new work new assignments you think it's too much when I ask you to run upon the winds of north or walk through the ocean you don't seem to like it Ariel no I don't sir which means I have not forgotten that I have not forgotten the torture where I was before you came into picture Prospero says you are completely unthankful you are nasty and you are a lie do you recall Psychorax who was an evil witch who was old and who had bad intentions have you forgotten about her Ariel says no no I have not forgotten Prospero yes you have where was she born tell me Ariel replies sir in Algiers Prospero counter questions and where is she now tell me I have to tell you the story every single month because you keep on forgetting it and then Prospero tells Ariel that she was kicked out of Algiers because of her evil deeds and mistakes because of her terrible crimes she was kicked out but only because of one reason they did not kill her what is that isn't that true do you know what was that reason and do you think this is true do you recall everything Ariel says yes sir Prospero continues and reminds Ariel that she was not killed because she was pregnant and she was made pregnant by the sailors and when she was left here Ariel was the slave of her Prospero tells Ariel that you were the slave of her and she had horrible things in mind which you were not able to execute and you had refused to do what she wanted she got angry and she had locked you up in the pine tree with her powerful assistants and servants and you were in the same position for 12 long years until I came and by that time she died and you were left locked in the pine tree there was no one on this island except for one person the son of Sycorax who was born Ariel responds yes her son was Caliban Prospero continues that is right you dull thing right now Caliban is my servant tell Prospero and Prospero tells Ariel 
how badly he was tortured when he first came here. Prospero reminds Ariel that he was growling and shouting out of pain and he was in such a bad state that even the animals on the island felt pity for Ariel. And Prospero tells Ariel in his words that when I arrived it was my magic that saved you and it was my magic because of which you were out of this pine tree and you were freed from captivity. Ariel thanks the master. I thank thee master. Prospero continues and warns. Ariel if you can if you complain if you are not happy with what I am assigning I'm gonna split this oak tree and lock you up inside and that will be for 12 long years again so do not complain Ariel apologizes please forgive me pardon master I will do everything that you say gently Prospero do that and I'll set you free in two days only I will discharge you don't worry just do as I say Ariel replies my noble master what shall I do tell me what shall I do Prospero Prospero orders Ariel to disguise himself as a sea nymph now what is a nymph now, it's a mythological character who's actually a beautiful girl he orders Ariel to be invisible to everyone except Prospero himself. Prospero hands over her garment for Ariel and asks him to put it on and then come back. Ariel leaves and then he wakes up Miranda. He says wake up wake up you've slept very well it's time to wake up now. Miranda responds and tells him that his strange story put him in a puzzled state of mind it made her heavy Prospero's strange story and sad story made Miranda grudgy Prospero tells her now it's time to wake up so shake off all your sleep and then he asks Miranda to come along with him to visit Caliban his slave and Caliban has a habit of not giving good answers good replies Miranda tells I don't like him father he's a villain I just hate him I just hate Caliban Prospero replies he tells Miranda that he is the only slave who does our work he builds fire for us he gets firewood and he is so useful to us and then they reach Caliban's and so Prospero and Miranda they go to Caliban's place and they wake Caliban up from sleep Prospero starts with abuses what ho slave Caliban thou art thou speak speak up Caliban you slave and say something Caliban replies and tells Prospero that there's already a lot of wood so why are you waking me up Prospero replies I've ordered you to come out so you have to come out there's some work to do just come out you tortoise in the meantime Ariel enters disguised as a nymph Prospero is happy to see Ariel he praises him and uh, says something in Ariel's ears now these are a set of tasks that Ariel has to do and Ariel replies my lord I will exactly do what I said and Ariel leaves Prospero again speaks to Caliban you poisonous slave a devil's son with a wicked mother just come out and Caliban eventually replies to Prospero and comes out of his place finally Caliban comes out and starts abusing Prospero and his daughter Caliban he says my mother used to collect dew with a crow's feather from the poison swamps and may you both get wet with it may hot winds of southwest blow on you and 
cover you with blisters so it's just Caliban's way of abusing the two Prospero he says if you speak such a thing again I will give you horrible pain and I will give you so much pain that you would not be able to breathe at all he abuses Caliban back by saying that he would send urchins or you can say goblins a scary creature to ruin and injure Caliban badly and Prospero says that those creatures will prick Caliban all night just like the sting of a bee Caliban replies he says I must eat my dinner now this island is my property because my mother owned this island and now it belongs to me which you have taken it from me when you first came here you took care of me you used to give me water and taught me the names of the planet the Sun the moon and you told me about daylight and educated me I loved you dearly when you first came here I was the one who showed you everything and who told you everything about this island where the fresh water springs were where the salt water pits were the barren places and the fertile places I told you everything about it I don't know why I told you those things I wish I could use my mother's magic on you and send the toads beetles and bats to injure you I was the only creature on this kingdom and you were my first king but look what have you done you have enslaved me in this cave and I have nowhere else to go Prospero replies he tells Caliban that he understands only the language of harm or hurt Prospero tells you just understand the language of a whip whip is you can say a stick which is used to beat up a creature so Prospero tells Caliban that Caliban only understands when he is hurt by some of the other means and then he reveals the reason why he enslaved Caliban Prospero taught Caliban he educated that ugly creature he taught everything about Sun moon planet etc but one fine day Caliban tried to rape rape molest Prospero's daughter and from that point on Prospero kicked Caliban out and he had to stay out and he was enslaved in a cave and as we know Caliban is a monster he replies oh ho I would have done it already I would have already molested your daughter if you did not interrupt and I would have successfully molested her and produced many other Caliban's just like me Prospero gets angry and responds he says you are a horrible slave you cannot be taught kindness because you are ugly and cruel he tells Caliban that he took a lot of pain to educate him Prospero tells I took all the pains to make you speak to teach new things and work very hard to teach new and practical things every hour when I first came here you were just babbling you don't even you did even know how to speak but because of me you learned speech I was the person who explained what words are and how to speak them but you had bad blood within you your wild race your nature is not good and you had a nature because of which nobody would come even near to you and so I had to lock you up in this cave which is an appropriate place for you even better than a prison Caliban responds you taught me how to speak and 
I have an advantage. I can curse you by your own language. May you get plague for teaching me your language. Prospero responds, get out of here. Just fetch us some wood and be quick. And are you trying to make faces on me? You ugly creature. If you neglect my orders, if you ignore my commands, I will give you pains and cramps all over your body. I will make your bones ache and make you roar. And I will make you roar so loudly that all the animals on this island will shiver from fear. Caliban responds, no, please don't do that. And then he goes aside and says, I must obey him. I have no choice. He is so powerful. My mother used to worship Sitibos. Sitibos was my mother's god. And this man Prospero has the power to enslave the god as well. So I must obey him. Prospero responds. Just get out of here, hence. And Caliban leaves for getting some fuel, or you can say wood. Now, following the commands of Prospero, Ariel is invisible and is playing and singing some songs. Ariel is playing some sort of enchanting music in the air, which nobody can see except Prospero. And Ferdinand is following Ariel. And these are the lyrics of Ariel's song. Come onto these yellow sands and we will join hands. When you have curtsied and kissed the wave into silence. Prance lightly here and there and the sweet spirit bear the burden. Listen, listen. And then we come to know that there are also other spirits on this island apart from Ariel who are again we can assume slaves of Prospero and they're making some noise bow 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 wow and Ariel speaks again the watchdogs bark and then again the spirits they make a barking sound and then again Ariel speaks Listen, listen, I hear the tune of strutting rooster. Cock a diddle dow. Now Ferdinand is so much confused because he is hearing this music in the air. He is wondering, where is this music coming from? Is it coming from the land or the air? All right, now it is stopped. I'm sure it must be played for some god of the island in here. I was just sitting on the bank and crying because I lost my father in the shipwreck. And it's this music that kept me going in between the wild waves. It calmed me down and it was a soothing feeling. It was able to make me happy and lessen my grief by its sweet tunes and I don't know how I followed it I followed the music and I should say that it pulled me here it pushed me here it dragged me to another place now it is stopped oh again it started Ariel starts singing again now friends Ariel is somewhere near Ferdinand invisible and trying to enchant him by the music of course this is according to Prospero's master plan. Ariel sings, full fathom five thy father lies, which means your father lies five whole fathoms below. Fathom is a unit of measurement and uh, especially for sea waters. So Ariel is trying to convey Ferdinand that your father is no more alive. He has already drowned five fathoms below and his bones have become corals and quite probably his eyes have become pearls because he's deep down into the sea and nothing is left of that man now and he has drowned and he has undergone a sea of change 
and he has become something rich and strange and there are these sea nymphs who are hourly ringing his bell or you can say death bell now the spirits who are trying to help out Ariel make a sound ding dong and Ariel speaks listen I hear them now Ferdinand is wondering first question that comes up in his mind is how is it possible that someone in this island knows about my father and his death and the fact that he died in a shipwreck so he wonders this song this ditty ditty is a song does remember my drowned father the song remembers my drowned father a normal living being could not be singing it this is no business of mere mortals I hear it now above me now till this point we can imagine how Ferdinand was enchanted by Ariel's music and Ariel following Prospero's master plan pulled or dragged Ferdinand to certain place now the other side of the island Prospero tells Miranda open your eyes raise the curtains of your eyelids and go take a peek and see what you can observe on this island so it is Prospero's plan again to make Miranda see Ferdinand so Prospero asks her to get up open her eyes and see what's out there Miranda starts walking she goes a little bit farther and uh, let me tell you the background Miranda as we know has never seen anybody else on this island except Prospero and all of a sudden she notices somebody and obviously it is Ferdinand that she sees we know she's young we know she is uh, beautiful and when she looks at Ferdinand she is unable to believe her eyes because she is looking at a young and handsome man for the very first time she says what is this is it a spirit is it an angel how handsome it is what is it it should be a spirit Prospero tries to clarify Prospero tells Miranda no no it eats and sleeps and does all the things that we do it has all the five senses that we do this gentleman that you see was a part of a shipwreck that happened just moments ago I agree with you that he is handsome but he has lost his friends on the way and he is straying about to find all of them he is wandering about to find them Miranda replies she tells Prospero that I should call him divine because I've never seen anything like this I have never seen a man so noble on this earth Prospero goes aside away from Miranda and he mumbles it's exactly happening as I thought it would and then he addresses Ariel spirit fine spirit I'll free thee within two days for this Ariel because you enchanted Ferdinand and brought him here so that Miranda could watch him I am definitely going to free you I'll reduce your sentence you will no longer be my servant Ferdinand speaks on before that he observes Miranda now they are face to face they are facing each other Ferdinand looks at her and speaks I am very sure this lady is a goddess and she's the reason why the music was being played then he questions the girl Miranda please I beg you to answer me tell me do you live on this island how should I behave here you are so marvelous are you really a maiden are you a goddess can you please answer my questions Miranda is surprised she responds no sir I am marvelous no wonder I'm not as marvelous as you perceive me to be certainly I'm a maiden 
now friends what is a maiden maiden is an unmarried young girl so Miranda replies Ferdinand she says I am not as marvelous as you see me to be but I am maiden for sure now Ferdinand is again amazed by listening to the words he thinks she speaks my language oh god she speaks my language if only I can go back to the place where this language is spoken Prospero is wandering on the other side now Ferdinand also mentioned that I am the best of them Prospero wonders how is it possible the best man is he the best man what would he say or how would he respond if the king of Naples heard him so here you can imagine Prospero and Miranda are together and uh, Miranda is uh, instantly fascinated by Ferdinand and vice versa Ferdinand is also fascinated by Miranda and when Ferdinand said I'm the best that can speak this language Prospero said best are you crazy do you know how would the king of Naples respond if he heard you that you referred yourself as the best Ferdinand answers Ferdinand says that the king of Naples and myself we both are amazed for the fact that you are speaking about Naples and I know for sure that he hears me every minute and that makes me cry I myself am the king of Naples since I saw with my own eyes the shipwreck and how my father who was the actual king died in the wreck Miranda is upset she cries out how sad how pitiful Ferdinand adds to her grief by mentioning that not only him but his lords Duke of Milan and his brave son all of them they died in a shipwreck now Prospero is thinking out in his mind in his mind he is thinking that the Duke of Milan and his more braver daughter that means he himself and Miranda could control him control who control Ferdinand easily if it was the right time now this is like love at first sight wonderful delicate Ariel my spirit I will set you free for doing this again Prospero turns to Ferdinand after speaking to himself and then he tells Ferdinand a word with you good sir can I speak with you aside you have done something wrong yourself and I need to speak with you Miranda reacts and now Miranda is speaking to herself we can say that Miranda is thinking out loud she says why is my father speaking to this handsome noble man so rudely and bluntly she thinks this is the third man number one is Prospero number two is Caliban and number three is this Ferdinand so he's a third man that I ever saw and the first person for whom I had romantic and pitiful feelings I hope my father takes care of him I hope my father is moved by the pity and he behaves well with Ferdinand Ferdinand speaks out he asks Miranda in a straightforward manner that if you're a virgin and if you have not fallen in love with any other man then I am here to make you the queen of Naples Prospero senses what's going on and he immediately interrupts well wait a minute hang on just a moment and then he takes him aside but before taking Ferdinand aside and speaking to him he thinks out loud again and this is one of the very important line 
Prospero thinks that if they fall in love so quickly, they might not value love. So I need to create some sort of trouble. I need to make them suffer and I need to make them long for each other in order for them to value the feeling of love. After thinking this, Prospero takes Ferdinand aside and speaks. I need to speak to you and I order you to listen to me. Hear me out very carefully. And then Prospero lies to him. Prospero tries to make something up, tries to cook up a story. Prospero tells Ferdinand that I think you're a spy. I don't think you are a king of Naples and whatever you are telling me you are. You are definitely a spy and you have come here to ruin me. You have come here as a spy and you are here to snatch away this island from me. But don't forget I am the rightful lord. Ferdinand is unable to believe what Prospero just said. He says, no, 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 I'm not what you think. And as we know, Miranda is already in love with this man. So she also defends her own father. She says, such a handsome and noble man cannot be bad. Nothing ill can reside in such a temple. If the devil had such a beautiful house now house it means the body because Ferdinand is handsome Miranda is calling Ferdinand's body as house so if devil had such a house then good things would fight within themselves to live in that house in short Miranda is trying to convey her father that Ferdinand is not at all a bad man and he is doubting him for no reason at all Prospero responds he asks Ferdinand to follow him and tells Miranda not to defend him. He is a cheater. Tells Ferdinand to come with him again. Now before these sentences, he had already accused Ferdinand of being a cheater. So now he tells him that he is gonna tie Ferdinand's feet and neck together and give seawater salty and bad seawater to drink and he also tells him that his food will be dry roots and husks and fresh brook mussels and acorn shells in short all the bad things will be his food Ferdinand responds no that's not gonna happen I'm gonna decline that I am stronger than you are until I'm stronger than you are I'm gonna decline what you said and immediately Ferdinand pulls out his sword and he is charmed from moving which means Prospero puts a spell on him and because of that he is not able to move at all he freezes along with his sword Miranda comes to defense once again she says oh dear father please don't punish him like this he is gentle and not at all scary don't do what you're doing with him Prospero responds he asked Miranda not to speak Prospero says what are you trying to teach me you are telling me that a daughter knows more than a father then he addresses Ferdinand and says put your sword away you cheater you're making a show but you cannot dare to hit me because you are full of guilt just come out of your position because I can easily drop that sword from your hands and easily disarm you with my magic wand Miranda defends she says please father I beg do not punish this man Prospero says leave my clothes and don't cling on them Miranda asks her father to have pity on this man please have pity on him I'll be his surety I guarantee that Ferdinand is a nice person Prospero responds if you say one more word I'm gonna punish you and I'm gonna hate you 
Are you trying to defend a cheater or an imposter? You cannot think that he is special. You are thinking that he is special because you have just seen me and Caliban. You are a foolish woman. In everybody's eyes, this man is a Caliban and compared to him, everybody else are equal to angels. Miranda responds. She says, if that is the case, then my affection, my love is most humble and I have no intentions to see another or a more handsome or a noble person than him. Prospero tells Ferdinand to keep on obeying his orders and he also tells him that his bones have no vigor in it. He tells Ferdinand that your muscles are completely lifeless, so just obey my orders. Ferdinand responds, how is it possible? Yes, you're right. It's like a dream and my strength is all gone. Then he thinks about all the losses that he is into. He thinks about how his father died. He thinks about how his body is weak now. He thinks about the loss of his friends and the threats of Prospero. Yes. And he says, I will take everything. I'm ready to bear all this grief and even forget about it. If only from my prison into which Prospero is gonna admit him soon he could look through a window once a day to see Miranda to make it simple if he could see Miranda from the prison then he is ready to forget all his miseries now that is the level of love they developed as soon as they saw each other Ferdinand says I don't need any freedom you just keep me in the prison and make sure that the prison window uh, has a good view and from that I wish to see Miranda and I would love to go in such a prison Prospero is thinking that everything is going according to his plan he's thinking out loud he says it works exactly as I thought then he speaks to Ferdinand come on come with me and then he addresses Ariel you have done a good job Ariel then again he speaks to Ferdinand follow me again he speaks to Ariel and instructs him to do something that he is gonna tell he tells Ariel listen to what you will do next for me and Miranda is trying to comfort Ferdinand and he listens to Miranda Miranda tells Ferdinand relax yourself don't worry my father is a kind man and he is kinder than his words just now make him sound he is not a cruel person and what he told you right now didn't sound like him at all I've never seen him talking so rudely to anyone and Miranda assures Ferdinand that her father was a good man and he should relax himself Prospero again addresses Ariel and tells that Ariel will be free as a bird but he has to do one more thing according to his commands Ariel responds yes I will do exactly as you say with keeping all the details in my mind Prospero asks Ferdinand to follow him and Prospero asks Miranda not to defend him and then they exit this is the end of scene one act two let's summarize as we know act one scene two starts off on an island and this is before Prospero's private cell or you can say room now scene one was about a shipwreck which Prospero and Miranda witnessed standing on the shore of the island and Miranda asks her father to stop his magic if he was the one who created the tempest or the storm she also asks her father to make sure that nobody is hurt prospero assured her that nobody was hurt and it was time that she should learn everything about how they ended up on this island and how they were in the past miranda is curious at this point and then Prospero told Miranda that it was high time she should know everything 
Miranda's curiosity keeps on increasing. She tells her father that many a times he had tried to tell Miranda about their history and how they came here but he stopped all of a sudden and then he would never continue but right now Prospero tells her that he would tell her completely. Prospero tells Miranda that once upon a time 12 years back he was the Duke of Milan and at that time Milan was a powerful lad and he was the greatest prince with great intelligence. But Prospero was inclined towards studies and gradually he lost interest in managing Milan and he started neglecting his duties because of the reading that he loved. Everything was delegated to his most trusted brother Antonio who started becoming greedy and ambitious. He made friends with kings with king of Naples and they both threw Prospero and Miranda in the middle of the night into an abandoned ship full of rats and no facilities and listening to this Miranda questions how did they survive how is it possible that in a damaged ship they reach this island and to that Prospero response he tells Miranda that they reach here because of his trusted counselor Gonzalo who had put books lots and every little thing that Gonzalo knew Prospero would need in the ship. All of a sudden Miranda grows sleepy probably because Prospero charms her with his spell and as soon as she sleeps Prospero calls Ariel and we get to know that Prospero and Ariel had made a plan to raise a tempest which was successful and Prospero asks Ariel about each and everything that happened near the seashore where Ariel had generated the tempest. Prospero asks a couple of questions to Ariel about the people, about the ships, about the mariners and boatswain. Ariel responds that the king's son is all alone sitting somewhere on the island and Ariel tells Prospero that the sailors and boatswain are sleeping at the deck of the ship and ship is safe at the harbor and they also believe that they witnessed a shipwreck and then Ariel tells about other ships the people of other ships they believe that they have witnessed a tempest in which the king and other people have died and the other ships were heading back to Naples hearing everything Prospero thanks Ariel and then Ariel reminds Prospero of his promise. Ariel tells Prospero that remember you had told me that you would free me a year earlier if I served you well. Prospero gets angry. Prospero reminds Ariel back about how Psychorax had captured Ariel and enslaved him in a pine tree for years and years. And in the meantime Psychorax had died. Prospero also tells Ariel how Psychorax was thrown out from her kingdom Algiers. She was thrown out of Algiers and she landed up on this island but she was pregnant and then again Prospero reminds Ariel of how torturous it was for Ariel to follow her commands and because Ariel could not follow Psychorax's commands he was imprisoned in a pine tree and when Prospero came or arrived he had rescued Ariel. All of this Prospero reminds Ariel and warns him. Prospero warns Ariel that if you keep complaining, if you keep avoiding my orders or do not obey me, I will imprison you again. Prospero instructs Ariel to become a sea nymph and become invisible to all except Prospero himself. Prospero awakens Miranda and she tells how Prospero's story had made her asleep. Now as soon as Miranda is awake in her full senses, Prospero suggests that they should go and meet Caliban, the son of Psychorax, the witch. Caliban starts cursing Prospero, Prospero abuses Caliban equally and orders Caliban to come out of his cave and get some wood. 
Caliban responds by telling Prospero how nicely he used to treat him and how badly he was treating him at the moment. Prospero reminds Caliban how he tried to rape Miranda. Prospero also tells Caliban that his blood was bad, his nature was bad, so he could not be taught kindness. Eventually, Prospero threatens Caliban and asks him to bring more and more wood. Otherwise, he would have cramps, said Prospero. Caliban had to obey him because Prospero had the power to enslave Caliban's god, city boss. On the other side of the island, we see how Ariel is busy in enchanting Ferdinand by the music that he is playing in the air invisible. Invisible to Ferdinand, he gets enchanted and keeps following the music. And at the same time, Prospero also asks Miranda to wake up and take a stroll. So Miranda with Prospero takes a stroll and it is according to Prospero's plan. They walk along the path where exactly Ariel had brought Ferdinand. They look at each other and they start loving each other. But Prospero is sensing danger in the situation. He observes that both of them have fallen in love at the first sight and to value love they should suffer. So he tricks Ferdinand by telling him that he was a traitor, he was a cheater just like Caliban and he was here on this island so that he could snatch the island from Prospero. Ferdinand definitely denies he couldn't understand. He tries to pull his sword out and Prospero freezes him with his magic. Miranda keeps defending her father but Prospero scolds Miranda, asks her not to defend. Eventually, Prospero takes Ferdinand to his prison. Ferdinand requests one thing. He says, I'm ready to go to the prison provided there's a window from which I can see Miranda every single day. At least once, I'm ready to forget all my griefs. I'm ready to forget about my father's death, about my friend's death and about how you are threatening me. But one condition you let me see Miranda once a day from the window of the prison and this scene ends with Prospero calling Ariel to do another task another secret task which Ariel obeys to be free from Prospero's slavery Ariel obeys blindly and assures Prospero that he will do exactly as he had asked Ariel to do. Alright friends, I hope I was clear, I was accurate. If not, let me know in the comment section. If you still have doubts in any of the dialogue, let me know and I will definitely address. I thank you for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.